Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Maths Module 14, Lesson 4. I'm going to start off by going over the I can objective. It says I can use a written method and strategies based on place value to add decimals. And the learning objective is to add decimals using a written method and strategies based on place value. And the prior learning is that students fluently added multi-digit whole numbers and students fluently subtracted multi-digit whole numbers. All right, let's move into lesson. We're on page 351. We have a step it out. It says, William buys a whistle and a yo-yo for his niece. What is the total cost of his gifts? Use the chart to help you find the costs. So for A, it says line up the place values of the two prices. And in this little grid over here, it sets us up with an addition problem with the decimals already there. And notice that the decimal takes up an entire row of the grid. They just really want to make sure that you don't end up mixing up the numbers and that each part of the number has its own column. All right, so I have... 1.73. That means in front of the decimal, I'm going to put my 1. And then after my decimal, I'm going to put the 7 and then the 3 all in their own squares. My 2.45, the 2 goes in front of the decimal and the 4 and the 5 come after. Just really trying to nail home that those decimals need to line up. They have to when you add and subtract decimals. And it makes sense because on the right side of the decimal, we're going to be adding cents together. And then on the left side, we're going to be adding dollars. So it is pretty important that we uh, line up the decimal. All right. So we did A. Then for B, it says add the hundredths. So remember, for place value, the first number after the decimal is tenths. There's no such thing as a one-th. There's just a tenth. So that means the next place value, two away from the decimal, is the hundredths. So they want us to add the five and the three. Well, five plus three is eight. Done. Now for C, it says add the tenths. Do you need to regroup the tenths? Explain. So I have seven plus four. Seven plus four is 11. So yes, of course, we are going to have to regroup. So I'm going to drop the one down here and just carry over my one past the decimal to the next group of numbers. So I'm just going to put yes, and that's because I end up having 11 tenths. So that is going to regroup to equal out um, one ones and one tenths. Because 10 of those tenths, 10 tenths, would be one whole. All right, C, done. D, add the ones. I'm surprised they didn't say bring down the decimal. That's definitely what we need to do first. Bring that, down that decimal, place it in its own little square. Now add the ones. One plus two is three. Don't forget the number that we carried over, so that's actually going to be four. So what is the cost of the two gifts? Now we're just taking that number and writing it as money. So it's going to be $4.18. It says, F, how is the written method you used in the chart related to using base 10 blocks or quick pictures to add decimals? Well, they're pretty similar. You In base 10 blocks, you still have to use the same blocks within the same place value. In here, we're just using a column to replace the picture. So I'm going to go ahead and say that the columns replace blocks that are alike. Because if I were adding hundreds, I would want to add hundreds with hundreds, where the in, in the written number method, this just takes the column and takes place of that. All right, great. Let's go ahead and flip the page. Now we're on 352. Number two says Heather and her mom drive from her home to River Park and then to Central Zoo, as shown. How far do they drive? So in this picture... Heather and her mom drive from her home to River Park. So they go from Heather's home, which is this little home. They go to River Park. 
That's the first part. And then to Central Zoo. So that would be another part of the drive. So in red, that first journey, it's saying it's 1058. And that second journey is telling you it's 21.7. So for A, you want to write an equation to estimate how far they drive. Remember, this is just estimating. So what are those decimals really close to? So 0.58, what benchmark is that closest to? And then 21.7, remember 0.7, I would actually write it as 0.7D because it. if you need a second place value, see it as 70. What is that close to in the benchmark? Then do the same thing that we just did on the last page. Use that chart. Line up the decimals. What is 21.7 written to the hundredths place? Add the hundredths, then the tenths, then the ones, then the tens. Regroup if you need to, just like normal adding. And then answer it. How far did they drive? And how do you know? All right, go ahead and try these couple problems, and then we'll come back and solve them together. Hit pause here. All right, great job. Let's go ahead and solve these together. So for A, if I was going to estimate, I would just take away the decimals if I'm trying to think about it. So 10.58 is really close to the whole number 11. So that would be 11, and I am adding them together, so it would be add. And then my 21.70, that's close enough to 22, just for my point of estimating. And I know that 11 plus 22 is going to be 33. So I'm assuming my answer is going to be somewhere around 33. All right, now for B, it says line up the place values of the two decimals. So in front of my decimal for the first one, I have a 10. So I need to make sure that my 1 and my 0 have their own columns. And then I have a 5 and an 8. And then I have 21.5. Seven. That's just how the number shows us, and I'll show you in a second how to do that. So that was B. For C, it says, what is 21.7 written to the hundreds place? That's really what I told you to do when estimating. So I added a zero at the end. If you needed to write to the hundreds place because you're adding, all you're going to do is add a zero at the very end so you have a number that you can add or subtract with if you were doing subtracting. All right, so that would be 21.70 because this is the hundreds place. All right, D, add the hundreds, then the tenths and the ones and the tens, regroup as needed. So we're just gonna add this problem together. So eight plus zero is eight. Seven plus five is 12. So I have my two. I'm gonna carry the one over to the next group of numbers. I'm gonna bring down my decimal. Then I have the one plus the one, which is two, and two plus one, which is three. Now it says, how far do they drive? Well, I know that my problem is in miles, so that's the unit I'm gonna add on to the end. So 32.28 miles. How do you know? if my answer is reasonable. Well, remember, I estimated 33. 32.28, it's at least one away, right? It's less than one away, so I know it's very close. So is my answer reasonable? Yes, how do I know? Because it's close to the estimate. All right, go ahead and finish up the rest of your problems for this lesson. And I'll see you back for lesson five.